What's cracking, yo? Welcome back to Boo TV. Appreciate you for stopping in. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, stay notified, and let's get into the topic for today. What's good? What's good? What's good, y'all? The poll results are in. It's been about a week. Last week, I posed a question to you all. Who is your favorite point guard of all time and why? Favorite, not who you think is the best. If your favorite point guard is listed below, please vote on them. If not, select other. I would love to hear your reasoning. We will highlight your comment and share it on the video release of this poll and here we are. So they only let me pick five. Like I wanted to fill this list with great point guards, but I could only put five options. So unfortunately I had to leave some people off there. I almost didn't put the options up at all, but I was actually curious to see what the percentages would be based on some popular point guards. Um, so Magic Johnson was the overwhelming favorite compared to the field with 58% Really not surprised there. Got a lot of golden age, golden era, old school uh, subscribers here at Boo TV. So I expect the Magic to get most of love. But in my opinion, Magic is the greatest point guard of all time. And for most people, if somebody's the greatest, a lot of people tend, tend to lean towards that person being their favorite as well. All right. Next up is John Stockton with 22%. Steph Curry, 8%. Other, 8%. And 3% for Isaiah Thomas. Not a whole lot of Isaiah Thomas here with a lot of those Boston Celtic fans and Chicago Bull fans and Laker fans. They ain't going to have a whole lot of Isaiah Thomas love out here. But shout out to uh, IT. Shout out. You know, so often we get into these debates about who's the greatest ever at this position. Who's the best at that position. Da, 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 da. But I really just wanted to hear, who's your favorite? Screw the stats, screw the legacies, screw the championships. Just tell me who your favorite was. What 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 point guard gave you a certain kind of feeling that you just love this point guard and you wanted to watch him all the time? Didn't have to be the best one, but something about this point guard, something he did, how he played, you loved it and you gravitated. To, I want I want some of that. I want some of that. No debate, no debate. Just tell me who you love. That's why I posed the question. Now, I didn't, I've only read two of these, and I read them on accident, so I went on ahead and responded to them, but most of them I haven't looked at yet. And, and, I, and I'll tell you who my point, favorite point guard is after. All right. The May Google Me. <laughs> I, like, I like that YouTube handle. The May Google Me. Dennis Johnson really deserves to be on that list so often overlooked and then i responded he was supposed to be but they only put they only let me put a limited amount of options like i said earlier yeah dj aka dennis johnson fantastic point guard a lot of people really don't mention dj and that's that's absolutely true a lot of people don't mention dj man dj a three-time champion baby dennis johnson is a three-time rest in peace out of a heart attack rest in peace to dj but three-time champion and no not all three of those were with Larry Bird, and him and Larry had a special connection, a super special connection, man. They were always in sync on the floor, and then they'll they'll tell you they'll tell you they swear they talk to each other telepathically, wouldn't even wouldn't even have to speak. But DJ also won a championship, and don't quote me on this. I think 1979. Don't quote me. Don't quote me. But he won a championship with the Seattle SuperSonics. Not only did he win a championship, that was his first chip, and then he got his other two at Boston. But not only did he get that chip, DJ got finals MVP too. He got finals MVP. He's been a multiple-time All-Star and multiple-time All-NBA de defensive first team and second team. DJ could play defense, bro. He, he, he gave you business on both sides of the floor. And there's not a lot of whole point guards in, in the pantheon of great point guards. There's not a whole lot of them. That, that hung their hat on defense as well. Wasn't a whole lot of them. Not, not at an elite level anyway. Thank you for the comment, V may Google me. The quiet cell. Shh. The quiet cell, my bad. The quiet cell. The quiet cell got Pistol Pete Maravich. Hey, if you haven't checked it out, 
I got a Pistol Pete Maravich video ready to go. Pistol Pete has some college records that will never, never, never be top. Pistol Pete was a problem. Pistol Pete was the original, the original and one mixtape player, bro. Pistol Pete was the OG Rucker Park before and one. He was and one before and one. Before Jason Williams, before Allen Iverson, before all these guys. Pistol Pete was out there doing the most amazing dribb dribbling moves. He was doing the most amazing passes. Um, even to today's standards, there ain't a single player in this league that can throw some of the passes that Pistol Pete was pulling off. And he was extremely dynamic in the fast break. Super dynamic in the fast break, dude. Pistol Pete was a problem. He never really reached that super pantheon, all, you know, all-time great, you know, his what his career type of thing. You know, he kind of fizzled out. Never really got to the highest of highs. But you know what? Still uh one of the one of the best point guards and one of the best passers, arguably. Uh, you know, you you can make an argument that he is the greatest passer of all time, but I, I firmly have Pistol Pete in my in my top four passers of all time. I, I can't even dude's court vision was incredible, man. See, he was bringing piz, pizzazz, sparkle, and style pretty much before anybody else. And I'm not the greatest historian of the game, so you can correct me on that if I'm wrong. But he was doing it at a, a fly level, man. Thank you for the comment, uh, the quiet self. Next up is Rusty Robot 5. Magic is part of the legendary pair that saved the NBA. Why, yes, he is, him and Bird. And he was always smiling. Yes, Magic had that effect. Now, it, Magic is generally considered the greatest point guard of all time by most people. But, you know, Magic had charisma. Magic had charisma. Magic loved to get along with people. Magic loved to be loved. And Magic loved to love. And he he would always have a smile on his face. Always extremely chipper. Great personality. And, you know, he just had that, that Colgate smile, man. He, and, you know, you always wanted, you always wanted Magic in front of the cameras. Because he, he just, he just had that aura and that personality. You're right on the money there, Rusty Robot. I can't disagree with you. All right, my man, Purpose Passion and Love TV. What up, Purpose Passion? What's cracking, homie? At 6'9 at the time, we would have never seen that. Mix that with his game and charisma, the no looks, the will to win, and being able to grow up during the Showtime era makes him my favorite point guard off this list. Kenny Anderson, although not as illustrious a career, is my actual favorite. Yo, 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 Kenny Anderson. Damn. That's that, that, that. That's a name I ain't heard in a, in a long time. Kenny, Kenny was dope. Kenny was dope. At 6'9", yeah. At Magic at 6'9". Um, yeah, Magic pretty much was one of the, the, the engineers, the pioneers of positionless, positionless basketball. One of them, one of them. Not, not, not the original. Not the original. But one of them. And his ability to play point guard at his size, it wasn't like he was a point forward or he's a forward playing point. No, he was a, he was legitimately playing. He was called a point. He was never called. Magic was never called a forward playing a point guard position. Magic played point guard at 6'9". In my opinion, Magic is the greatest passer of all time. Like The, the, the passes Magic would throw. Mwah, 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 mwah. And, and Kenny Anderson, I think Kenny Anderson was draft for if we're talking about the Sam Kenny Anderson, it's, it seems like a common name. But the dude that was drafted by I think he was drafted by the Nets. And I know he bounced around with a lot of teams through the nineties. Maybe made it to the early two thousands. I really can't remember, but I know he bounced around. And he had he had some peak seasons. Um I think he made one all star game, one or two. I remember watching one of them or watching highlights of one. I think he was on there. Might have been like early nineties or mid nineties. I know he wasn't in the. I know he wasn't in the '98 All Star Game and anything past that. So it would have been like somewhere between maybe '92 and '97, maybe. But uh, he was a phenomenal passer, and then he he could even score the basketball. He had a he had a handful of uh, years there in in his prime, where he was in you know I can't remember, maybe like 15 to 20 points per game for a range of the years. Something around that, and you know he give you ten assists easy, 
Easy. Dude could really pass the ball. Great fundamentals on his passing as well. Kenny was dope. Kenny Anderson was dope. Thank you, Purple Passion TV. Much love, my brother. Charlie Kennedy. Dennis Johnson, a.k.a. DJ. Rest in peace, class act. Great, great player. Three-time champ. Final MVP. Bird's twin brother. And I, respo I responded, facts. Rest in peace. Yeah. Just spoke about DJ. Uh, definitely, like I said, three-time champ. One time with the uh, Sonics, two time with the Heat. And like I said, that's that's Bird's brother, man. That's Bird's, Bird's black twin brother. <laughs> but like I said, they, they were always on one accord, man. They were always in sync. It was amazing. I, did, I didn't even watch it. Obviously, I wasn't really around. I was young. I wasn't really around. But just from what I've been able to see and research, like these guys were synchronized, bro. They had like a symbiotic relationship. Appreciate you there, Charlie Kennedy. Much love. The Burley, or wait, the De Burley Triple A hype man is Paul's hero in real life, IRL. <laughs> I love these YouTube handles. Uh, he says Penny, dot, 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 dot. Penny Hardaway, Anthony Hardaway. Yes, Penny, man. Y'all remember the Little Penny commercials in the 90s, the Little Penny commercial? The commercials was dope, bro. I I'm thinking about doing a reaction, doing like a reaction video playlist. Going back and looking at classic NBA commercials, the Penny's all-time great uh, little Penny commercial. But Penny Hardaway as a player was one of my favorite players to watch, even albeit I was young. But Penny Hardaway is one of those players that his career ended abruptly because of injuries, and we never got to see how long he could sustain greatness. But no doubt in my mind, had Penny Hard Hardaway never got injured, Penny would be a top 15, top 20 player of all time. And I truly believe that Penny was sensational, man. P Penny had height. Um, what was Penny about? Don't quote me on this. Penny had to be about, what, 6'8"? I know he's taller than 6'6". Six, six. I think Penny might have been about 6'8". Don't quote me on that. But Penny could pass the basketball, man. Dude had supreme court vision. He could do it with style. He could do it with pizzazz. And he can do it with the fundamentals, man. Penny could handle the ball. Penny could run the fast break. Penny could shoot the three ball, baby. See, people don't forget. People forget, bro. Penny could drill you from three-point land. Sweet stroke, sweet jumper, bro. And could finish in the paint. Remember, before Shaq and Kobe, before Shaq and Kobe, it was Shaq and Penny. Shaq and Penny, Shaq and Penny. It's a song. It's a song, Shaq. It's a dope song called Shaq and Penny. Um, and together... You know, they had some pretty good playoff success. Never won a championship, but they made it to one NBA Finals and had some deep playoff runs. Ultimately, never got the job done. You know the story. Shaq leaves. And uh, at some point, I know Penny bounced around. I know he went to the Phoenix Suns and I think the New York Knicks. I can't remember if he went to another team before he retired. But unfortunately for Penny, the injuries got him. But, but damn, Penny was a problem, bro. Penny was a problem. Thank you, the De Burley Triple A hype man is Paul Hall is Paul's hero in real life. Appreciate the the uh, comment. Ray McLeod, 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 something like that. Magic was fast. He could pass the ball. He could play point guard or small forward. He had good hands. He knew how to score. He also had a great attitude to win. He was very quick in the lane. All true about Magic Johnson. Ray, you speak in facts, my man. You speak in all. Facts, but yeah, we he could play. You, you saw in the finals, man. Game six, they put him in that center. He he got the job done, handled the business. That performance alone gave him the MVP. And yeah, he had he had phenomenal hands and wasn't much of a shooter per se, but he could score when necessary when he had to and knew how to do it. And he could get the ball. And and Magic was clutch. Magic was clutch. My boy A Ram. Chiming in. Magic, Oscar, Stockton, Pistol, Isaiah. I would place Isaiah ahead of Pistol Pete, but he watched Pete's instructional videos and copied his instruction and style. Aram is one of the OG members here, and Aram is a complete historian of the game. Past and present, Aram knows a lot, but you got you got a fine list there. Magic, Oscar, Stockton, Pistol, Isaiah. I would definitely put Isaiah Thomas ahead of Pistol Pete, too. But, you know, you always got to pay homage to the people you write. We learn from the ones before us, usually how it goes. But, yeah, yo, Isaiah, Isaiah Thomas was a problem. Nice list, nice list you got there. 
a lot of people will have each of these guys, and I've seen each of these guys in people's top 10 lists. Appreciate you, Ram. Next, we got Gwumpy Old Man. Oscar Robertson, easily the best and my favorite. But the Magic, because he was such a universal set. Then Walt Frazier, his defense was superb. Pistol Pete, his ball control was freakish. Bob Cousy, the Houdini of the hardwood. Nate Archibald, then John, Zeke, Kobe, Curry. There are probably other players in there. I wouldn't throw Kobe in as a point guard, but I love Kobe, so I ain't going to give you no shit, bro. Thanks for putting Kobe in there. But I am just not thinking about them. What about Jerry West? Are you counting him as a point guard or shooting guard? Because that will shake the list up. I will put Jerry at number three if he is in the discussion. Uh, you know, I've always... Y'all let, let me know what you think about First of all, uh, yeah, the big O is... Most people have Oscar Robertson in their top ten. The big O is a problem. First guy to ever average a triple-double and was the only guy to ever average a triple-double up until Russell Westbrook achieved it. Uh, Oscar Robinson gave uh, a lot of people problems. A lot of people problems, man. And he, he was an absolute beast on the Milwaukee Bucks, man. Tough, tough as nails, could score, could, score, could rebound, could really pass the ball, man. He, he, he could do it all. He could do it all. Uh, Jerry West, what do y'all think? Do y'all do y'all put Jerry West as a point guard? Or sure, I've always thought of Jerry West as a point guard, me personally. But then again, y'all might know more than me, may know better than me may have more knowledge on Jerry West than I do, but I've always pictured him as a point guard. Y'all let me know what you think about it. Appreciate you, Gwumpy old man. Stan Shame says the big O, the big O, the big O. Facts, like like Gwumpy old man just said, the big O, one of the greatest point guards of all time. You know, damn near had a record that was never going to be touched. But, you know, I, I, I like big O's triple-double just because of the era. I think it would have been harder to get a triple-double in his era. But that's just my opinion. Appreciate you, Stan. Daniel Canfield says, I agree. DJ was probably the smartest of all point guards and a decent shooter. Yeah, DJ was extremely smart. High, 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 high basketball IQ. And you know what? To play with Larry Bird, to get along with Larry Bird, to synchronize with Larry Bird, you gotta have a you gotta have a high basketball IQ. You really do. You really do. And he really, he could really feel the game and feel the flow uh, at, a, at, a, at an elite level was DJ. And I don't even know as much as I know about you guys, but I know that. Well, I don't know about him as much as you guys know about him, but I know that. That's what I should have said. Okay, this is one I did not expect to see. Rudy can't game. Rudy can't game. Appreciate you. For the comment and uh before that i don't know if i said thank you as well thanks everybody for the comments uh tony parker i did not expect to see tony parker a lot of people you remember for a while there in those 2000s between whenever, whenever parker got drafted i think it was like after I think it was after after 2001 might have been like 2002 2003 i can't remember off the top of my head uh, but there was a stretch there, especially like the mid 2010s. People were calling Tony Parker the best point guard in the league, or one of the best point guards in the lead in the league. Even when Chris Paul was playing, right? They had CP3, they had Darren Williams, who were literally back going back and forth, and then C and then um, Tony Parker's name was mentioned in there with those three guys. But uh, yeah, Tony Parker. With Greg Popovich, Tim Duncan, Manu Ginobili, was an absolute problem, man. That, that I listen, man. You know when we used to play? I'm a Laker fan. We used to play the Spurs. Nobody's Tim Duncan was Tim Duncan, man. But you know who really scared me was Tony freaking Parker, because the Lakers have historically during that 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 Laker era, Lakers have historically had issues guarding quick point guards and point guards that can score. Tony Parker used to give us so many problems. So many problems. Dude was so quick, dude. Tony Parker had that damn floater. Nice English off the glass. Always put it off the glass. Super high basketball IQ. Played within the confines of the Greg Popovich Spurs offense. Could pass the ball, man. God, I used to hate that guy. Shout out to Rudy Can Game. I'm, I'm going to mess your name up. Hey, Oli. Howley? Maybe Howley. Howley Flip. Howley Flip. 
Paole flip or how they flip? Mark Price, 90s Cavs. Yo, Mark Price was a beast. That was a dope Cavs team that they had there in the 90s. Um, Mark Mark Price Cabal, man. Mm -hmm. Mark Price made a handful of all-star teams. At, at, at least three, maybe more. I know he made at least one all-NBA team and maybe a couple of the lower all-NBA selections. Don't know how many. But for, for a handful of years, he was an all-NBA level player. Won two three-point shooting contests. Five, and, and he was also one of the members of the 50-40-90 club. But, but Mark Price was a beast, man. And you had to watch him at the top of the key. That boy had a sweet stroke. Mark Price had a sweet stroke. That boy could shoot, man. You better watch him at the three-point line. Especially, especially coming off a screen or a pick. He was water. He was butter. Sweet stroke. Could definitely pass the ball very well. Uh, was a great, great player for, for, for quite a few years. He's one of the other guys later in his career. Injuries took him out. And, you know, I think he spent, after the Cavaliers, I think he went to Washington. The Bullets at one point, I think. And then maybe another team. Don't quote me on that. But uh, he was a beast. And uh, he had some really good ball handling. Could really split defenses, split the double teams. He's one of those kind of players. If you can split the double team, you can create havoc once you get into the paint, man. Because that's that's two players behind you, open man. What are we gonna do? Thank you for the comment there, Flip. My boy Creontes. I think Magic is the best and my favorite, but I'll give the vote and shout out to John Stockton because he rarely gets any love and was a mean machine in the court. Barely missed the game his entire career. So shout out to John Stockton, man. Yeah, yo, John Stockton was a beast, bro. Uh, out there on the Utah Jazz, I think it's pretty sure he spent his whole career to Utah Jazz, if I'm not mistaken. Him and Carl Malone were a dynamic tandem, man. They went to two NBA Finals together. Probably would have won if it wasn't for Michael Jordan and the Bulls. But Stockton was an Iron Man, and the crazy thing is, he doesn't look like it, right? Like he's not physically like you know a hulking type point guard where it looks like oh his body's durable. No, it didn't look durable, but his body was durable. John Stockton, this dude. This dude would play so many full seasons. I don't, I don't remember off the top of my head, but I think he has some kind of record for that, too. I don't know off the top of my head. If you know, let me know in the comments section. But John Stockton could really pass the ball. As we all know, the all-time leader in uh, total assists is John Stockton. And, you know, he wasn't doing a lot of flashy passes. John Stockton just always did fundamentally sound passes simple bounce passes simple chest passes the occasional very 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 occasional very occasional you know pass out to make you say ooh we very occasional but he would he just stuck to the fundamentals and got the ball where it needed to be when it needed to be, be there that was John Stockton and could play defense Stockton was a problem bro appreciate you thanks for the comment Sean, 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 what up? Sean says, Allen Iverson. I'm glad. Whenever I see some Allen Iverson love, I get happy. I love me some AI, man. Um, Allen Iverson is one of my favorite players of all time. I actually have a, a video out on Allen Iverson. You can, Actually, I'll, I'll put the link to that video in the description of this video if you want to see my Allen Iverson video. Um, I'm not sure if he has a playlist or not. I probably need to make one for him. But listen, AI, what most people would consider... Pound for pound, the greatest player of all time. And Allen Iverson on a good day was six foot one. People forget how small AI was. Not only at that size, he was constantly going to the paint. Score people always say Kyrie Irving was great around the rate right in the paint, man. Allen Iverson was scoring in the paint all the damn time and was a fraction of Kyrie Irving's size. And Allen Iverson was doing it in the league where there were big, strong giants and bodies and centers. He was going at, man. Allen Iverson had a nasty floater. Allen Iverson could dunk. Allen Iverson could do it with both hands. Allen Iverson, we know, arguably, no, the greatest crossover in, in, in NBA history. Sorry, Tim Hardaway. I think Allen Iverson has the greatest crossover. Allen Iverson really brought that, that street feel to the NBA again, man. And his demeanor, the dude had so much heart, so much heart, so much heart, man. I just wish in his prime he had more help man he he brought that horrible i'm sorry that was not he did not have a good supporting cast
with that Philadelphia 76ers team. They were really good at defense. Don't think that was a really good defensive team. But offensively, they were challenged. And Allen Iverson carried that team with Aaron McKee, Dikembe Mutombo, uh, Eric Snow. Did I say Aaron McKee? Aaron McKee, if I didn't say it. Uh, who else am I forgetting? Matt, I think Matt Geiger was on that team. Maybe Tyrone Hill. Um, he brought them to the NBA Finals and took one game from the Lakers team that hadn't lost all all playoffs all playoffs long. I was so salty about that. I thought we were going to go undefeated. And then freaking I- Iverson had to show his face in game one. Yeah, Iverson, man, one of the greatest scorers we'll ever see. My, pound for pound, the greatest basketball player of all, all time. Pound for pound, man. Pound for pound. This guy was able to do, man, score at such an elite level. My God. Thank you, Sean. James Woods writes, Jason Williams, a.k.a. White Chocolate Dude, had mad handles and could drop the sickest dimes on the opposition and made it look easy. Ask the glove about (laughs) J-Dub. The glove, GP. Uh, Jason Williams, actually have a Jason Williams video too. I'll put that in the description of this video as well if you want to check it out. But yeah, uh, White Chocolate was a problem, man. Pretty sure he was drafted by the Sacramento, yeah, Sacramento Kings. And then eventually he was traded in that Mike Bibby trade. But the dude, White Chocolate was a problem. Dude, White Chocolate had handles. He could hit you with the hezzy, switch hands, and then the passes. White Chocolate's passes were amazing. Absolutely amazing. And really, he showed us the elbow pass, right? <laughs> Hit the ball with the elbow across his back to the player. Nasty. Nasty. Go check out my video about white chocolate, man. He 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 brought that 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 street ball back to the NBA too. Boy, that that boy had handles. He would break down defensive like it was nothing. Nothing. Appreciate that, James Woods. Jeremy Moke. Magic, bro. Watched him play, but Isaiah definitely second. Magic was a huge, Magic was huge at point. A beast on the boards, not just assists. When the 80s Showtime was on, it was on. Jeremy, you ain't saying no lies, fam. You ain't saying no lies. Yep, he he, he could fill all those areas. Rebounds, assists, points, Magic could do it all. And yep, he was Showtime. He brought Showtime to the NBA, not just the Lakers. Appreciate the comment. El Quaco, El Quaco, the Grumpy Duck, my guy. Magic, poetry in motion, up against my man Larry Legend. They saved the game. No lies there. We got plenty of Magic and Larry Bird content right here on this channel. These two resuscitated a dying league together. Magic brought Showtime. Larry Bird brought that Boston Celtic grit, and the two personalities and two playing styles clashed so many times, and it was great to see an amazing rivalry. Lakers and Celtics, Magic, Bird. Kareem McKell was amazing. It was amazing. Mark Valoria writes, Jason Jason Kidd, great one-on-one defender. I can't talk today. Jason Kidd, great one-on-one defender, great rebounder, barely turned the ball over, would choose when to score, break opposing teams' momentum. Now, I'm going to come back to his comment, all right? Richard Powers writes, effective, plain and simple. I like that. I don't care what point guard is. My favorite point guard is a point guard that's effective. That's all the money I need. Plain and simple. I like that. Getting back to Mark Valori. Now, that's all the comments. So, I want to say um, thank you, for, thank you everybody, for, for uh, contributing with the votes. and the. I didn't say how many votes we had. We had uh, 291 votes. for. So, thanks for the participation, everybody. Appreciate it. It's great to see uh, everybody contributing and giving their opinions and everything. I love to see it. I love to hear it. I love to talk about it. So I said I'd get back to Mark Valoria because Mark Valoria said Jason Kidd is is, uh, his favorite point guard. And me too. I said I saved mine for last, so we're going to do it together. Jason Kidd is my favorite point guard of all time. Jason Kidd. Now, I got Jason Kidd video too, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about J. Kidd. So I'll put a link to that video in the description of this video as well. Um, so you can see me talk more extensively about J. Kidd. But J. Kidd was my guy, man. I will I will take him over Steve Nash any goddamn day. And for me, it's not even close. J. J. Kidd played both sides of the basketball. And people, don't, people forget how nasty J. Kidd was, bro. Lockdown defender, small, could grab rebounds, push the tempo, run the fast break like many couldn't. 
even in a half court offensive set, Jason Kidd was absolutely phenomenal, man. Jason Kidd had eyes in the back of his head, bro. Jason Kidd would throw some of the nasties behind the back pass, just some of the nastiest passes in general. Jay Kidd has some of my favorite um, fast break highlights, man. The dude, dude was sensational, man. And, and you know, his staple wasn't scoring. So people was like, well, Jason Kidd really could. Well, Jason Kidd could score if he needed to. Like, if you told Jason Kidd, hey, I need you to go out and give me 20 points, he could go out and get you 20. I ain't going to say it would be super easy like a score would, but he could get you 20 if you asked him to. But Jason Kidd just always just played the game. He didn't care. He did not care about stats. That's the other thing. Jason Kidd would get a lot of triple doubles, man, a lot of them. And a lot of times, he'd be damn near have a triple double at halftime or the third quarter. I'd be looking at that. I was like, damn, Jay Kidd, you got eight, eight, and eight. And it's, it's halfway through the second quarter. But Jason Kidd didn't care about stats. That was just his game, man. He knew where the ball was coming off the rim, and he would position himself, even in a league with a lot of bigs, at the power forward and at the center. He was out there out-rebounding bigs, and he'd get the ball always head up, always on a swivel. He'd get the outlet pass, or he'd run the fast break himself, both hands, right, left, and he could shoot, man. He could shoot when he... No, he wasn't a shooter like Steve Nash, but you leave Jason Kidd open for a three, and he could bang one on you. I mean, he ain't creating off the dribble with regularity. You know, like, or, you know, straight up off off a screen like a Steve Nash. Well, he can't score like Nash. No, Nash was a fantastic shooter. But as Jason Kidd got later in his career, uh, he adjusted his game, started practicing a three-point shot more, and he actually became a pretty lethal three-point shooter in those Dallas years. He did. But, man, he was, he was phenomenal on the New Jersey Nets. Got him to two NBA Finals. Almost got MVP one of those years, if not both of those years. Lost to the Lakers, lost to the Spurs. And then, you know, teamed up with Vince Carter, Jay Rich. And I really like that that team with Vince Carter, Jay Rich, Nanette Christick. I really like that squad. Uh, Mickey, Mikey Moore, Mickey Moore. Uh, they had a really good team, but they, they would lose to the Miami Heat and the Cavaliers. But, yeah. Yeah, Jason Kidd was that guy, man. That's... Uh, his passing was phenomenal, man. I just loved watching him play. And like I said, I like defense, and he he gave you intense defense too. That's all I got to say about it. Again, thank you, everybody, for participating. Uh, thank you for the comments. Thank you for the votes. Love hearing all of you guys' opinion and, and sharing it with everybody else and, and going through your comments. It means a lot to me. So thank you for your support and your contribution. And it's been fun running down some of you guys' favorite point guards of all time. Be on the be on the lookout for our next um, our next poll I put out our questionnaire, and uh, probably within the next couple of days I'll have it up. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Stay blessed. And have a great week. Catch you on the next one. We out, baby.